so we can We can move forward. Okay, so let's continue and look at question five. Uh, question five, it is normal probabilities. So you are given all the information required uh, because this information was collected from a five point scale of five different questions. And the data is normally distributed with the mean of 13 and the standard deviation of three. And N is your number of cases. So the first question is, what is the proportion? Remember all this, we also did cover this during our session. Proportion means decimals. Percentage means you need to leave your answer multiply by 100, and the number will be the actual value that we need to be calculating. You also need to know how to read the table. So because we're going to use normal distribution table, remember this is our normal distribution table, where we're going to use the large, the smaller portion, larger portion, and the mean to z to find the probability or to find the proportion that we are looking for. OK. Then we also need to remember to use the z-score formula. Uh, remember that. OK. With that being said, remember your z formula looks like this. If your z is equal to your x, minus your mean divided by the standard deviation. This n of 100, we're going to use it when we calculate the last value, but uh, for now, we don't need the n value. You are given your mean, you are given your standard deviation. Your x value will always be the value in the question. The other thing you need to take into consideration when you answer the question is the greater than sign or the less than sign, or the between. So that you need to take into consideration. Okay, so how do you answer 5.1? How will we answer 5.1? Are you guys back? Or am I talking to myself? Did I unmute okay. myself? Okay, I wrote the same to road. Okay. So seven minus thirteen. So that will be Z of greater than our X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Then I Your said Z. yes. Then I said it's seven minus thirteen. 7 minus, minus 13. Okay. Divide by 3. Then I got minus 6 over 3. It's negative 6. Oh, yeah, okay. Equals to minus 2. So, therefore, even and if I don't have to write all this Z because I'm running out of space anyway. OK, then I went on the Z table to check where does negative two go falls under which. Then I got 0 0.977. So because it's greater than and it is a negative value, so we need to go to do we go to the larger portion or the bigger portion? It was the smaller portion. So if I draw a graph, then sometimes we always use this. So negative two will be here. And because it says it's greater than, therefore we're looking for this area. Yes. So what does this area mean? 
the big the bigger it says bigger area is the larger portion so it yes. means we need to go to the larger area oh, okay. so we're looking for two so you need to scroll until you see two that will be on the second page so, so you can find yep. the table in on, on um, either on your study guide if they do give you or in your tutorial letters or somewhere. Uh, this one I'm using from the past exam papers. So two is okay. there. We're looking for the larger area. Oh, okay. And that will be the answer that you are looking for. Okay. So the proportion. Okay, so this. Now, because I am running out of space, actually, I should be writing this properly in a way that you are able to see how to answer this question. So the whole question should have been the probability of Z less than, or Z greater than minus two is equals to 0 0.97725. How many sevens? Two sevens. Two seven. <clears throat> that's how you will write your answer in terms of the proportion and that's what they are looking for okay so that is one so let's go to the next one i'm also gonna run out of space here i'll see how i can squeeze it in so that was number one. So number two, which is your Z of less than 19. Now remember here, we're looking for Z of less than our X is 19 minus the mean of 13 divided by. Divide by three. Divide by three. And that gives you Z of less than. 6 over 3. 6 over 3. Yes. Which then it is equals to 2. Therefore, our probability that we're looking for is the probability that Z is less than 2. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So what that probability is. So you can also do the same and draw for yourself a graph that represent the same. And the Z value is, will be the same, isn't it? Is it the same? Because we're looking for a positive two. Oh, mm. come on. It's still. We go to the positive two side and we're looking for a less than. So a less than will mean this area, that side of positive two, which is the larger portion as well. So if it's the larger, larger portion, therefore it's the same. It will be 0, 0,97725. But remember there it says what, what is the percentage of the score of the students. So we're going to have to multiply this by 100. And the answer here will be 97.7. 97.725%. Or you can leave it as two decimal, which will be 97.73%. Or you can leave it as one decimal, and it will be 97.7%. And that will answer 5.3. Now, 5.3. 
So 5.3. 5.3 is asking you to find the actual number of students that falls between that. What will be the number of students with the raw score between 7 and 19? To do that, since we have calculated both 7 and 19, we have the Z score for both of them. All what we just need to do is we can either go and use the mean score to Z or the mean to Z values for 7 and 19, which will be 2 and 2, which it will be the same value and we add them together or we subtract one from the other. Or So how do you answer this? Uh, we know that to calculate the the mean to Z, of the between, we use mean to Z, isn't it? This will be a very difficult one to do because there are zeros. There will be zero, so because the mean to Z for both of them will be the same. So let's so go to the mean to Z for two. We need to say, okay, let's use this. Let's use this place actually for it. So in order for us to find the probability that Z, uh, not Z, X lies between, X lies between seven and 19. I'm sorry about the flicking. Uh, therefore, it means we would have found the probability that, remember we calculated the Z, I'm not gonna repeat this Z scores and calculation. I'm just gonna use the values we got, the values we got, we know that for, the Z score will be between for seven, it was minus two, so it is between minus two and and two. And in order for us to use the mean score, we say the mean two Z of minus two plus the mean. 2z of 2. I'm just going to put it in brackets like that. So it means we're going to use the same value twice. So that will be 0, 0,47725 plus 0, 0,47725. And that is how much? Point four. It's 0.977. Which is 0. Point... I did I like this thing? Zero point... It should be 0. 0.9545. Yes. 0. 0. 0.9545. 5, 5, yes. Yes. So now, remember, this is the proportion of between. This is the probability of the between 7 and 9. The question was, what is the number of raw scores between? So we need to know the number of students. How many students do we have? We have 100. So it's possible. Then we need to take this the probability so we can say the probability of z less than negative 2 and 2 of 
zero comma nine five four five. Is it four five or four two four five? Four five. Okay, it off. We need to take that to find the number that is zero point nine five four five multiplied by one hundred. And that will give you your number. How much? How many people? Ninety five. Ninety Actually, it's 95.45. Round it off, it will be 96. 96. I'm not sure you can give it as that, or you can say 96, depending on how the memorandum looks like. You can write all of them. You can also say, therefore, it will be 96 students. You can write the value, the decimal value. And then also round it off and say it will be 95, 96, because if you round off, 95.45, you will get 96. Um, and that is how many students scored between that much. That is question number five. Uh, I hope you did write down this because I, when I send this documentation, I won't be able to send that unless if I send this as a screenshot. Let's see, 5.3. Let's call this. Right. Okay. Five point three. <coughs> I will see this as an image on WhatsApp as well. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to question six. And uh, question six. Is your probability? Sorry, sorry, Lizzie. Yes, yes. Yes, no. Before we move on, guys, um, 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 can, can you can you explain again for me this thing of uh, of uh, of a larger portion and the smaller portion, like with the with with an age of a diagram, like so, like I always like find it very difficult for me, like to 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 understand this thing. Okay, so let's use this site. So you need to take into consideration when you work with this data, with, with the table. You need yes. to take into consideration the sign provided, like the greater than, less than. Between. Less than, yes. They yes. give you the sign. Yes. So when, I'm going to put it this way, and you must write it somewhere because you can use that as a reference. When okay. the sign says greater than. Yes. Okay? This is without using the diagram. Okay. I'm going to use the diagram just now. When the answer is negative, so your Z value is negative, and the question was greater than. When the Z value, when the Z value is negative, therefore you go into look at your diagram, which looks like this, and Look at the negative value because remember in the middle here it's zero. It's zero, yes. On your graph. So any value that is this side of a zero will be negative. So this will be a negative A negative value. Four. Because the okay. sign says greater than, you need to shade the greater than of that value that you have as a Z value. So the greater than will be the side of the Z value. Of remember, the Z value. Z value. Yes, so maybe instead of using A, I must use Z. I must use when Z is negative. negative. Therefore, we're looking for this. And if you look at the area that you shaded, there is a small part that you didn't shade, but you shaded the bigger side. So therefore, it means on the table, you're going to go to the larger side. Other side. 
Yes, to the larger portion of the table. Of the table. Yes, so what then now comes, what if the sign also stays as greater than, but the answer is positive? So if the answer is positive, therefore, you're still going to draw your graph like that. Remember in the middle here, it's zero, but it is positive Z. So let's positive. say this is your Z is positive here. On the right side. The sign here says, greater than so we're still yes. going to assume the greater than so it means the shaded area will be this if you look at this graph also yes. you can clearly see what side or which side is shaded is it the larger portion or the smaller portion that is shaded the smaller portion, smaller portion. so therefore it means you're going to go to this smaller portion smaller portion so okay so so Okay, if if I get you correct, so like we like after after drawing this thing this diagram, like no, then you will go for the shaded side, shaded sided. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Oh, so oh, 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 okay. If the sign says less than, let's take that for example. Okay, yes. If the sign is less than, yes, and you get your answer as negative, your z value is negative. So I'm gonna draw my graph there. And I'm going to draw my zero there. Yes. So negative. It's on the left hand side. So yes. this is the negative Z. Look at the sign. Which side am I going to shade? The it's left. The le okay. I'm going to shade the left side because the sign is less than. Less and less than tells me. So this tells me that I'm a shade this side you see yeah. so the sign need to also guide you in terms of which area you're going to shade so this shade, one was shade. a greater than so the sign tells you i'm a shade the bigger side the bigger side this one says i'm a shade the smaller the side or side. the right, right or left right yeah let's make it that way so mm. this one says i'm a shade the right Right. Because the current says current to the right, and this one says I'm a shade the left side. Left. The current is to the left, so I'm saying yeah. left current. Right current yeah. means shade to my right. Left current means shade to the. I give the shade to the, to the right to the left. The left, yes. Left. I know, no. Shade left, right. Shade right. Shade right. So you need to also remember that. Okay, so if okay. the the sign uh, your z score is positive so there is your zero in the middle and there is your z so remember the sign says left so it means i'm a shade to the left so the left. It means all this can you see and then automatically clearly i can see that now i need to go to the larger portion, larger portion. Larger portion. And then the between, it's always easy. Between, between, we always use the mean to z. We add the values of the mean to z. So the between is always easy. You just look for the mean, the mean to z value. If the mean to z is that two, two yes. seven, you just add that value and that value. You just take the two values, the mean two. to z values, and add them together. That is the mean to z. That's easy to do. Okay, no, thanks, man. Thanks, man. No, it's clear now. No problem. No problem. Okay, so let's move to question six. Question six. Let's just make this bigger or smaller. Let's reduce it a little bit. Two departments have entered a crossword puzzle. And the competition wins 15,000 worth of prices. For the, for the leading computer store. Department A has 300 entries. Department B has 400 entries. The report from the competition administrator is that 1,000 entries qualified from the solution provided. Bo uh, sorry. The report from the competition administrator is that a thousand entries qualified 
and from the solution provided, both departments qualified. What is the probability that the two departments will win first and second place? How do we answer this? Uh, okay, I, I wrote P into department A close brackets times P into department B close bracket. Then I went on and said 300 divided by 1000 times 400 over 999. Okay, so the yeah, so the first the first thing you need to actually also do because this is a, an an independent probability question. In order for you to be able to find the probability of joint probability of both of them. In order yeah. for us to find the joint probability of both of them, because this says what is the probability that department A and department B win first and second prize. So they didn't say which one wins first. So because that is the case, we can calculate the probability of A times the probability of B. So therefore it means we need to find the probability of A and we need to find the probability of department B winning the prize, right? Yeah. That is one of the the first thing that we need to do. Mm. I think for A is zero comma three, um, and then for B is zero comma four. four so. yes. Uh, wait, uh, let's do this because I want to write it correctly here. Yeah? So we first need to identify what will be the probability that A will win the price. Right? Mm. Will win the first prize because they say um, what is the probability that the two departments will win first prize and second prize. So the first thing that we need to establish for everything, how much max is there? Three max. Rainbow. This is very big. So in order for us to find the probability that um, the department will win a first prize or second prize. We need to calculate. Sorry, Liz. Someone's background has your something going on. Okay. So, if we take into consideration, let's say uh you win the first prize and your friend win the second prize oh that was the one example that was used in in your study guide i think mm. we can use the same scenario here in terms of this what if we take the f that the first prize goes to department a and the second prize goes to department b So 
if the first if what will be the probability that the price will go to department A? That will be 300 divided by a thousand. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes. Divided by 1,000, not 100, please. Divided by 1,000. By 1,000. That will be how much? 0, 0,3. 0, 0,3. 0, 0,3. Then what will be the probability of this uh, department B winning a prize. So no, that will be 400 divided by, remember already the first prize went to department A. So then 400 divided by 999. 999. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Can can you repeat this part of ninety-nine thing, the first prize and the second prize? So like uh when do we change to that to 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 uh to ninety-nine? Yes, yes. Because already we know that the first prize went to um, Department A. So mm -hmm. therefore there are 999 prices yeah. left. Yeah. Which then the second prize will go to the to the next to, to the next uh available. Okay, 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 no thanks. Okay. Okay, so the then we can use the same information and calculate because that's all what we need. Just substitute into the formula that we have. We, we could have just substituted into the formula there. So the probability of A and B because it's First and second winning a prize can be given by the probability of A being 0, 0,3 multiplied by the probability of B, which is 0, 0,4, and that is equals to 0, 0, 0,12. And that is 0, 0, 0,12. Remember, this is, uh, sorry, I need to also make this uh, a, a clarification. This is if department a win the first prize. Now we need to also do the same for when department B department B wins a first prize. So if department B wins a first prize, you do you go and do the same thing. I'm not going to uh, redo separately. I'm just going to do it here. So the probability that department A and department B wins uh, is the same will be if department A, uh, department B wins the first prize, therefore it will be 400 divided by 1,000 multiplied by, now we're going to multiply by the 300 divided by 999. Nine, nine. And that will give you, what, how much? Mm. Is 
it will give us 0, 0,12. And that is 0, 0,12. 0, 0,12. Now, what would be the probability that both of you win the prize? Then that will be there. You can just use the addition rule. Okay, so, so it's for zero point one two plus zero point one two. Yes, so that will be so to answer this question. So that will be zero comma one two plus zero comma one two, which is equals to zero comma two four. Zero comma two four. So you just need to follow that step. So we could have just took this and substituted into there the zero comma three times zero comma four. We could have just said three hundred times oh three thousand three hundred divided by a thousand times four hundred divided by nine nine nine, and it would have given us zero comma one two. And then the last part will be to add both of them to find what is the probability that the two department a and b win first price and second price so yeah we could have just said the probability of first and second price is equals to 0 0,12 plus 0 0,12 is equals to 0 0,25 two, two four. that will be the answer to the question that you are looking for and this is for three marks. So probably this is one mark. So one for doing department A first, one mark for doing department B first, and one mark for getting the probability of first and second. Okay. But there's a lot of working for such, for so low marks. Yes, I know. Yes, I agree. Yes, so it's just one mark, one mark, one mark for showing that calculation. So you just need to say department A first and department B first. Let's show that. Okay, <clears throat> and that is question six. Now let's move on to question seven. Okay, question seven. Now we get into hypothesis testing. Um, question seven says a personnel officer of an organization, you <clears throat> or as a personnel officer of an organization, you want to determine whether there is a difference in the productivity of employees from two departments from the organization. To determine this, remember now this is two departments, so there are two different departments, not the same, different department. To determine this, you choose to, um, you choose two group consisting of 10 employees from each department, therefore they are independent of one another. What happens in one department does not have any bearing on what happens in another department. So these are two independent samples. The productivity of employees from each department is measured in terms of the average unit produced per workday in a month. In order to draw a conclusion, you need to determine whether there is a significant difference between department A productivity score and department B productivity score. The other thing you need to take into consideration, because this is a hypothesis testing, you need to read the question carefully in terms of what you need to be doing. So there, you need to determine whether there is a significant difference between A and B. They didn't say anything about greater than, less than. So therefore, you need to take that as your two tape, or what do you call it? A non, is it a non-directional, a non-directional test that you need to be doing. So if that is the case, 
And if that is your non-directional case, Formulate a hypothesis testing. How do you formulate the hypothesis testing? You have the mean of A and the mean of B. So your null hypothesis. How do you state your null hypothesis? Okay, I said U department A minus U department B equals to zero. Mu A minus mu B is equals to zero. And that's how you state your null hypothesis. Or you could have just said okay. the null hypothesis mu A is equals to mu B. It would have still meant the same thing so you can state your statement like that so you will get one mark for doing that that is your null hypothesis 7.2 formulate the appropriate hypothesis in weights that's very important you see not in symbol so the first one they said in symbol this one says in weight, so you need to be very careful with this. So next time, in terms of that one, uh, 7.1, if they said in weight, you just repeat the same statement that you have there. There is no different. There is no difference between department A and department B because they are equal. There is no difference between the two departments. Uh, or you can say if they said in weight, you would have said there is no difference between the mean score of department A productivity score and the mean score of department B productivity score. That would have sufficed if it says weight. So now what will be the alternative hypothesis? Based on that, we know that we're doing a non-directional test. So what would you say is your null hypothesis? There is a different, I think that's what we say. There is a difference between, and you just repeat the same statement. I'm not going to write it. You just repeat that statement. There is a difference between department A productivity score and those of department B. That's how you will state it. Um, don't state the significant, just the difference between because you haven't proven anything to be significant. So you just stated that that if they would have said symbol. So in terms of symbol. Since we're doing a. Non directional test, so you would have said your alternative will be the mean of A. Is not equals to the mean of B or you would have said your now uh, your alternative hypothesis not the now the alternative you would have said the mean of a minus the mean of b is not equal to zero that's how you would have stated it in a simple format okay so you need to take that into consideration when you answer the question. So it's just only one mark. Don't use symbols when they don't ask you for symbols. If they ask you for the weights, use the weights. 7.3, assuming that the data are normally distributed, select an appropriate test statistic and calculate the test statistic. So here they're asking you to do two things. What is the appropriate test statistic? You don't have to say this is the appropriate test statistic. You just need to write the appropriate test statistic that you need to be calculating. So what will be the test statistic? It is the spooled variance T test. So you're going to use T. Okay, we're going to say T equals to mean of A minus mean of B.
over the square root of standard deviation of a my over number plus standard deviation of b over number uh not the standard deviation but the variance this s squared yeah. ne? the yeah, variance yes. which is s squared of yes, b squared. Over the sample size of b yes then we will have our mean of a to b 7.7 .7. Hmm. Our mean of A is 7.7 .7 minus 4.52 over the square root open bracket for 2.23 over 10 plus 1,16 over 10. There we got 3,18 over the square root of, I will just tell you the total of the, those two, of those two numbers, which will be 0 0.339. Okay, so you just give me the, the overall answer. That yes, for those two beneath, yes. So it means everyone needs to know how to use their calculator to calculate and find the values. So then it will be after removing the square root will be 3.18 over 0 0.582. Okay, so sorry, the top one is 3.18 divided by the square root of 0 0.339. Okay. Then I, after, then I yeah, got really confused on how to remove the square root because we have T, so our T is going to be T squared. Mm -mm. So you just say three, comma one eight divide by find the square root there is a a square root like this on your calculator oh, what kind of a calculator do you have oh it's a case you're then it will be the 0 0.582 uh, so you need to use that fraction thing for your case show because you you could have used the whole thing on your calculator to calculate okay you it have this be, fraction yeah so it will be 0 0.582 It's 3,18 over 0 0.582. Yeah, I ran out of space. Uh, yes. So then what will be the answer? The final answer will be 5.5. .5. The final answer is 5.5. .5. Or we can say the final answer is 5.4. If we eight. divide two decimal for six or four eight. Eight. Is it eight? It's Four, eight. Five point four six. Hmm? Five point four six. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Let me just double check something here yeah, on my calculator as well. Three point one eight divided by. Oh, come on. I used the wrong calculator. So. Yeah, it's four six. Okay. Yes, it's four six. Yes. Okay, so then that will be your test statistic. And then the next question says determine the degrees of freedom. How do we find the degrees of freedom? N1 or NA plus, is it plus or minus? Plus N1 minus 2 because there are two of them. Ends, which is 10 plus 10 minus 2, 10. which is 18. 
10 plus 10 minus 2, which is equals to 18. Yes. That would be your degrees of freedom. Okay. The next one says determine the critical value. So it means we also need to go to the T table. But determining the critical value, because we're doing a two-tailed test, so it will be T alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom. What is our alpha? We were given 0, comma, what was our 0, comma, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,05. So you just take 0, comma, 0, 0,05 and divide by 2. T of 0, comma, 0, 0,05 divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom we did find it was 18, which is T of 0, comma, 0, 0,025 and the degrees of freedom of 18. So we need to go to the T table. Oh. We'll have to go to the T table. So you go to your tables. We look for T, T table. For a table that says T table. And on there at the, because we're doing a two tail. We're looking for. Oh, OK, I forgot about your tables because they look different to my statistical table. So sorry, my bad. Ignore what I just said. Uh, let's go back. Let's ignore what I just said because I realized I am teaching you the pure stats way of doing things. <laughs> yeah, and I was getting lost because I've never divided them by two. Yes. I don't know. So... Because yeah, I, I knew N is minus one. <laughs> so T is alpha and the degrees of freedom, and that will be T of 0, 0,05 and your degrees of freedom of 18. And because we're doing a two tail test, we're going to look at the two tail test and look for 0, 0,05 because I just realized that there is the value that I was referring to because I was splitting the two tail into the upper tail and the lower tail, and that is the value that I was working with. So you guys, you don't have to divide by two. You use the table and your table has the two tail, if it's a two tail test, and a one tail if it's a one tail test. So we're going to use 0, 0,05, and our degrees of freedom was 18. So we go where? Degrees of freedom is 18, and where they both meet, that will be your critical value. And your critical value is 2.1009. is your critical value for one mark. <coughs> Okay, then the last step it says using the information, interpret the results in terms of the rejection or non rejection area of the null hypothesis. So now, here is the other thing you need to always use diagram. It's easy to represent your information on a diagram because then you will not get lost when you are interpreting your answers. You don't have to you can use it. Since it's a two-tail test, you can do it this way. So you have your upper tail that side and your lower tail this side. So those are your rejection areas. Anything that falls in the shaded area, you reject the null hypothesis. Anything that falls here, you reject the null hypothesis. That's the easy part with this. So since we have defined what our critical value is, we said it's 2,10. So therefore, this side will be a negative 2,10, and this side will be a positive 2,1009. So I'm just saying 2,09. So regardless of where our test statistics was, so our test statistics is 5,46. If it was negative, we can also use the negative side. If it's positive, we use the positive side. So it's positive. I'm going to check if it falls in the rejection area. So it falls in the rejection area. 
Therefore, in this instance, if your T critical values, this is the decision. So this makes it easy. Decision, the decision rule. It it makes it it makes life easier to do this way, so that you don't um, get confused. If your sorry, if your test statistic, not the critical value, if your test statistic which is the T value that we calculated here. If your test statistics is greater than your critical value, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That's what we're going to do. This is just the decision rule. I'm just giving you as an information. You just need to have it in the back of your mind or you can write it down so that you can reflect on it. Because the question there is only asking you for one thing, only one thing interpret your results in terms of rejection or non-rejection based on this decision rule are we rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis what is your answer we are rejecting so the answer for 7.6 7 will say the test stat of 5 comma four six is greater than the t critical value of sorry of two point one two comma one zero zero nine therefore we reject now hypothesis you just write that statement that is it one mark you get that one mark that is seven point six 7.7 .7, interpret so yeah we know that we're rejecting the null hypothesis now we need to go back to the statement that we stated in your null hypothesis remember that statement there is no relationship oh there is no difference between the null hypothesis and the alternative now if we are rejecting that statement and we say there is a difference because we taking the alternative statement here. We're rejecting the null hypothesis that says there is no relationship or there is no difference. How do you interpret that in relation to this? In your plain language, you see there they say in your plain language. So don't use the textbook language, use this language. So even though they say in your plain language, there are a couple of things that you also need to take into consideration. The level of significance which tells you the, the rejection area in terms of this uh, significance of that rejection. So you can do that in terms of the certainty of the data that you have. So because it's 5%, you can use the 95% confidence or you can say 95% certain that blah 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 you can use that you need to you need to take that into consideration the level of significance you need to take into consideration the results of whether you're rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis and you need to take into consideration the statement you stated in your null hypothesis so and because they say with how much certainty can you conclude this because it was 90, it was 5%. What will be the certainty of that? Will be 1 minus 5% or 1 minus 0 0.05, which is 95% certainty. So you're going to state it in the way that you will say with, or you can say you are 95% certain that there is a difference between uh, how did we state this the, there is a significant can i say it can yes, i, yes, can can I it. state it the way I it yes you can say it the way you want to say it uh, so that you can correct me if i'm wrong yeah i had said the researcher concludes with a 95 percent certainty that there is a significant difference in performance in department A from department B. There we go. You put it nicely there. And that's how you will say it. 
as long as we can mention the 95% certainty and you can confirm that there is a significant difference. So what you just do is just take the 95% and also take everything you stated here in your alternative because that's what you said. But include now that portion of there is a, so now you take this whole statement with 95% certainty that there is a significant difference between Department A productivity score and those of Department B. So the only thing that you add here is a 95% certainty that there is a significant difference between and that is if you are rejecting the null hypothesis. If we are not rejecting the null hypothesis, the statement would have looked different. You would have said with 95% certainty, there is no significant difference. And that is what you would have said if we were not rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay, that is 7.7. .7. Any questions before we move on to the other statement? Questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's move on to ANOVA. Um, Sorry, just give me a second. Okay, um, sorry about that. I just wanted to, before we move to the ANOVA, to also confirm something as well here. Um, when you do a test, a hypothesis test, because I don't know in terms of your, um, in terms of the hypothesis testing question that they will give you, you need to also take into consideration the following two things or one thing that might give you a difference. So if you have, so 
for this instance, because we know that we're doing for independent variables or independent departments in department A and department B. Uh, we used this formula for those who did, who don't know why we use this formula. We used uh, the test statistics formula for this because the sample sizes are equal. If the sample sizes are not equal, then you will have to use the pooled or the spooled variances formula, where then you will need to calculate the spooled variance and then substitute it back into the formula. So you need to take that into consideration when you answer questions like this. So the first thing that you need to recognize is are these n sizes the same? If they are equal, then it's fine to use this formula. If they are not equal, then you need to use the pooled, uh, we call it the pooled variance, I think, the pooled variances because of the unequal size sizes. So that will mean that the formula that you will use, you must look for that, um, is your N1 minus one times the standard, uh, the variance for one plus your N2 minus one times the variance of two divided by N1 plus N2. That is the spooled variances that, or the pooled variances that you will use. And you will need to use your uh, t-test as your pooled variance. And if I can remember the formula correctly, I think your t for that pooled variance will be the same as your mean one minus uh, minus your mean two divided by the square root of your spooled variance. Uh, I'm not sure now. Is it the pooled variance divided by N1 and the pooled variance divided by N2? I think so. I think so. Pooled variance divided by N1 plus the pooled variance divided by N2. You will use this formula, which looks different to this because your S, SP, your pooled variance is given by your n n1 minus 1 times s squared 1 is it plus or minus i can't even remember this but you need to look at the the formula the exact it's formula plus. i think it's a plus yes it's a plus yes uh, plus n2 minus 1 s, s. squared 2 divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. That will be the pooled variance uh, formula. But this is if your n is different. So department A, maybe they selected 10, and department B, they selected 11 or 12. Then you use that one. So you need to take those small things. They can make a huge difference because the answers you get will be different as well. And the way you will make decisions as well will be different because of the critical value, uh, it's not the critical value, but the test statistic that you would have calculated as well. So take that into consideration. Uh, unequal sample sizes, which is your N. We use that. So just remember that for some reason. I wanted to highlight that because you will never know in your exam, they might not give you the same as this exam that they have. Okay, so let's look at question eight, which is ANOVA. So with ANOVA, there are several formulas that you also need to familiarize yourself with and you need to know them and how to calculate them in order to answer this question. So this is an, a table with all the information you need we need to find out if there is a significant difference between the student, student attitudes towards statistics at first, second, and third year level. And why you know that also you're doing an ANOVA? It's because now you're not given two variables, you're given three variables. When you have three variables or three measures, you're going to use the ANOVA. If you're given two of those, you're going to use a t-test or uh, Z-test 
for you to answer the question. Okay. So they gave you the null hypothesis. They say the mean of all three levels are the same. And we are also given the level of significance, which is 0, 0,01. Okay. So 8.1. So you need to take into consideration all this information that is given in this table. That is very important, this information. Okay. Use that. Let's just erase it manually. Okay, so let's look at 8.1. So 8.1 says choose an appropriate test statistic. So now, in order for you to do this, there are so many other things that needs to happen to calculate the test statistic for this hypothesis. And you can see that this is out of eight max so it means you will need to calculate the sum um sum total some measures total you need to calculate the um you will need to find your sum measures your or mean measures as well um so your sum errors your sum for treatment or group um, and then your mean measures for group and errors, and also to calculate the F-test statistic. So this will take you most of the time to do. So in order to start off, so to answer 8.1, so we go into first, I have to answer the following question. We need to first calculate your SST, which is your SS total, which is given by the sum of your x squared minus the sum of your x squared divide nah, not everything but just only those ones divide by n so you will have to use that formula so actually we do have formulas here why am i scrabbling my head if we know what formulas are there so we'll need to calculate all this because we need to find that and we also need to calculate all this so the first one we're calculating is that one the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n so that is the first step so Based on this information, this the mean bar is shifted. So there is a bar in, on top of this. You can see that there is a line that shifted then. Eh? So the sum of x squared is this value. So we just take 5, 8, 7. You just replace the sum of x squared with that value. So this whole thing with that value minus the sum of x. This is your sum of x is 85, but it's squared. So you just need to put the square, divide by n, and remember your n. So let's go back to the formula. n is a capital letter n. You can see that now. You can see that also on the others, the n is different. So your capital letter n is different from the small letter n. So you need to take that into consideration, your capital letter n. Uh, what did I use? I used the small letter N on the formula. So let's change that to capital letter N. So that will be 15. And what is the answer? So it will be 587 minus the fraction of 85 squared divided by 15. What do you get? 105.3, that's what I got. 105.33, I'm just going to keep two decimals. You need to make sure that you keep most of the decimals, uh, probably while you're still working. Um, so I'll just keep two decimals, or you can keep one. It doesn't really matter at this point, but I'm going to keep two decimals. So we have our SST, we can go find the next formula we need to use. We can use this formula, SS group. Um, 
your SS group is the sum of your mean J minus the mean. So that will be the mean of every the mean, so it's that minus the overall mean, that minus the overall mean, that minus the overall mean, because it's the summation of them squared. So we just need to calculate it that way. So we can do that. Uh, so I'm going to calculate it. I'm just going to use this part here. So we have S as group is equals to the formula it's a small n so small n times uh, we don't have to do times we can do the sum of sum of your mean j which is the mean of every one of them that minus because that's what the formula says minus the overall mean or and squared. So our small n is five times. We need to do all this. So this is okay. Let's go back there. You can see that it says the sum of 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 that of that. So we can also in this put that because we need to do the sum of individual values. So that will be six minus. 5, 5.67 and we need to square that plus because it says the summation and then we do the same 2.6 minus 5.67 squared plus the last one 8.4 8.4 minus 5.67 squared and we can close this so you can calculate that and get the answer to the and also calculate on my side so that we can have the same answer when you give How much do you get? You just let me know. I got 84.9315. Do you all agree with that answer? Yes, I also got this. Uh... Okay. Just give me a sec. There is a. I don't know what was that. Um, the answer here will be eighty-four point nine three three. I number. So I'm just gonna keep two decimals. So that will be eighty-four point nine three. So that is the SS group. Then let's go back to our formulas because we can use our formula to guide us what we need. So we've calculated that, we've calculated that. We also need to calculate this. Uh, we need some uh, SS error. I'm just going to do SS error on my right. <clears throat> SS error is given by 
your total minus the group. So it's this total minus SS group. Yes, SSG. So we've calculated SST, which was 105.33 minus 82.93. Yes, what do we get? Twenty point three seven. That's exactly what I got. Twenty point three seven. Twenty point three seven. So depending on who's, how many digits you kept, your answer might also look different to the one that we have in front of us. <clears throat> 105 point three three minus eighty four point nine three. So in terms of the one that I am look, looking at, I get twenty point four. Yes. So, so it will depend on use the value you see on your calculator as long as it's not far away from the values we are getting. And this is mainly because of how many decimals we are keeping. So they should not penalize you for that. They don't. I don't think they will expect you to be mathematicians, um, but just to see that you understand the concept as well. <clears throat> okay, so we're done with the SS, the sum square measures. Now, in order for us to calculate this because our aim is to calculate this. This is our final thing, the test statistic. This is the test statistic that we want. That is the aim. In order to calculate this, we need to also calculate the mean square measures, as you can see there. So we can start with the mean square measure error. But now you see there at the bottom of this, there is the degrees of freedom. So now it means we need to go and calculate these degrees of freedom, all of them. We can do all of them and then come and substitute into the formula. So let's start with the degrees of freedom for total. So we can start with that. Oh, I'm going to write it in here so that I don't lose the space for other things to do. So let's start with the degrees of freedom for total. That is capital letter N minus 1. Capital letter N minus 1 is 15 minus 1. Therefore, it is equals to 14. 14. And then we can do the degrees of freedom for group, which is the number of groups minus 1. We have group. We have three groups. There are three groups minus 1. Therefore, it's equals to 2. Oh. And the last one, it says degrees of freedom for error is number of groups times the sample size of the group minus one. So degrees of freedom error, it will be three times five minus one, minus one which is equal to three times four. Twelve. Which is well, we have the degrees of freedom. Now we can go and calculate our measures, some uh, mean measures, uh, measure group, uh, mean measure group. It's SS group divided by the degrees of freedom group, so which is easy. MSG is so SSG divided by your DFG. SSG, we found that it was 84.93. 84.93. And our degrees of freedom for group is 2. So the answer here is equals to 84. Oh, I, the answer I got is 42.47. That's what I got as well. 42.47. Oh, seven. 
And I guess that's what most of you would have gotten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we need to go and calculate the last one, which is because it's MS group divided by MS error. MS error is SS error divided by the degrees of freedom error. So we can do that. MS error is given by SS error divided by degrees of freedom for error. Yeah, SS error. One. We did calculate it was 20.37. 20.37, depending on your date. Remember your values that you got when you answered? You must substitute them as you saw them or as you have them. Divide by the degrees of freedom error, which is 12. And what is your SS? MSE error. I got 1.67697, which is 1.7. 1. 1. Let's keep two decimals. I just want to keep it. It will be 1.69. Hi. Okay. 20.37. 1.69. Is 1.697. Oh, yeah, I see where you're going. So, yes, you and just leave it at 70. Mm. Yes, 1.70. 1.70. Mm. Okay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now, the final thing we need is the test statistic. That is what we are aiming for. Our test statistic is MS group divided by MSE. So, our F is msg divide you will write it in full ne? ms group ms error our ms group was for the 2.47 divide by 1.70 and that is equals to 25.14 24.98 and that is out of it's for eight marks so let me just see how many marks you get one two three four five six, seven eight nine yeah. okay so somewhere one of them it's so it's one each and then the degrees of freedom probably all of them they constitute one mark because if I read this, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Should get sixteen marks. Seven and eight somewhere. It will come somewhere from the degrees of freedoms. We uh, must still do the. Are we not supposed to present we are in the supposed table? Supposed to do the table. Oh, did they say present in a table? Yes. Oh, yeah. They don't want to see all this work, but they want the table. Mm. So you don't even actually need to show all the the calculations, but the, what is very important is that's what they say. Choose mm. the appropriate test statistics for this and calculate the test statistic. There is no way that you can calculate the test statistics without calculating all this. So you yes. will have to show all of them. And once you're done, then we can present it in the table. You remember the table looks like this. It was supposed to be 25 marks. It was yeah, 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 there's a lot. There's a lot of job. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for some reason, my lines don't want to cross over, so I'll just. So, uh, let's erase this one. It must be here. So remember then, this will be your source, degrees of freedom, your sum square measures, your MS measures, and your... Not writing again anymore. Huh? Um, we can't see that. I think it's not writing. Your pen is not writing anymore. Are you sure? Can you all not see what I'm writing? You no. ended up drawing, but now what you are writing, the degrees of what, the sum of what, we cannot see that. But can you see the table? 
Yes. Yes, the table is there. But what you are writing in the table. Are you sure you're not seeing the MS, the SS we can, heading? No, I it's, can, there, it's there I on can top see of the, the table. Heading. Yes, that's what I was writing. Yes. The headings. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I'm I'm just writing the headings for now. So now we can do uh what do you, what do we call this one? The group, the error. Usually it's called treatment. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you want to use treatment or group. You can. It doesn't really matter. And then the total. And maybe probably I can do it like that. Um, and like this as well. So yeah, you you will have the degrees of freedoms. So degrees of freedom for group, you will say 12, 14. Is it 14, 12? You will say okay. 12 and then you will have 14 there. Your sum square measures here, you will have your SS group, it's 84. So you can just say SSG equals, I'm not sure if they want you to label them. Uh, you must look at the example in your study guide as well. How they did it, so you can do the same as what they have just so that you don't lose marks um, and then sst uh, which is 105 and ms g which is 42.47 and ms E, which is 20.37. You don't have to worry about the MST. And then here you say F is 24.98. <clears throat> so if you had already calculated them outside, I don't think there should be any problem when you just substitute the values into this. Eight marks, so probably one mark for the table, one mark for each of the calculation. I don't know. I don't know how they mark it, uh, but that will be one mark for each one. Probably they will mark it inside the table. So one mark for the table, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something like that. I don't know, but it's eight marks. 8.2. Determine the critical value, which will help you decide whether or not you will reject the null hypothesis. So this is ANOVA. Uh, remember with ANOVA? We use the F distribution. So remember with F distribution, you have your degrees of freedom one and your degrees of freedom two. So your degrees of freedom for the numerator, which will be your degrees of freedom. Numerator will be what was in the F test, uh, which one was at the top, uh, group. So degrees of freedom for group is two and degrees of freedom for error is 12. So uh, here we look for group degrees of freedom for group and the degrees of freedom for error on year. So let's go there. So it is two and twelve. So we're looking for two at the top and twelve at the bottom. So that will be three comma eight nine. That is your degrees of freedom. Oh, sorry. That's the other thing. Wait, 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 wait. Not too quick. Not too quick. Not too quick. The other thing we need to take into consideration is the alpha value. What did they say our alpha is? At 0, 0,01. We need to take that into consideration. Uh, that is 0, 0,05. So we need to look for 0, 0,01. 0, 0,01. So our degrees of freedom, 2 and 12. 2 at the top and 12 on the left and where they meet 
6,93. And let's go there. Your degrees of freedom is given by your alpha and V1 and V2, or degrees of freedom 1 and degrees of freedom 2, which is your T of 0, 0,01 and 2 and 12. And that should give you 6,93. Now, based on that information, the other thing that can also help is looking at your F distribution. This graph also gives you a guidance in terms of your F distribution. It's always a one tail test F distribution. Even if we're doing a two tail or what, this will always, the rejection area will always be in the lower side, in the right hand side um, or the smaller shaded area. So if this is our critical value of 6,93, what was the test statistic that we got? We got the test statistic of about 24.98. So we can make a decision based on that. So six point nine three is your critical value because that will be your F critical value tells you that. So anything that falls in this. This is our decision rule. Anything that falls here, we reject the null hypothesis. So now our test statistic is 24.98. It will fall in the rejection area. So we, uh, the question is, do you reject the null hypothesis? And you can say uh, your F Statistic of equals to 24.98 is greater than your F critical value of 6.93. Therefore, we reject the null, uh, the null hypothesis. I don't have to write it in full if I wrote this symbol. We reject the null hypothesis. That is the, the decision you make. 8.4 says interpret your findings. Now, the same as what we did. Remember now, this is at 0, 0,01. Anyone who wants to take a step at this, how do we conclude Always go back to your null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis stated that the mean are the same. So there is no difference because the, the question was, is there a significant difference? So the mean says there is no difference between all three levels. Now, if we are rejecting the statement that there is no difference, how do we then conclude? Anyone who want to take a step? Okay, Mina, I said there is a significant difference in the student's attitude towards the statistics. Then I said this can be concluded with 99% certainty. Thank you very much. That's how you conclude. You don't even have to put the 99% certainty in front. You can also include it in the end. And you said it perfectly because there is no there is a difference there is a significant difference between the student attitude towards their first second and level third years level okay that is question number eight let's move on to question number nine we almost done
there is a significant difference, blah, 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 blah. And that just making it clearer on the document. When I send it, then you can have the information that you need. Okay, I think this will be almost like mostly how many more questions? This is the last. Oh, this is the last one. Okay, so now we are on the chi square test, which is also another test for categorical variable differences. Uh, where we test the relationship between two categorical variables. So now you want to test whether there is a difference between first and second semester students regarding their level of significant or satisfaction relating to the assessment method. So semester one student responded and semester two responded and you collated the information. So this is a two by three chi-square table. They also did calculate the chi-square test for you because that is your chi-square test statistics, which is chi-square stat. Your test statistic is calculated. You just need to make sure that you read the question carefully and answer. 9.1, make a contingency table to represent the given information, clearly indicating the observed and the expected. So now, so since they say create a contingency table, you need to rewrite this contingency table and somewhere you will have to tell them that these are your observed and anything in the bracket is your expected, something like that. That on your table will clearly indicate whether what is what that they are looking at. Okay, so or you can create two a copy of this you can create observed you can say observed and then you can replicate the same information here and say expected it depends on you how you want to do that and they have another column here that shows expected of yes and no and not sure you can have it this way it's three months there's nothing wrong you can just redraw it and have observed in, uh, at the top here. So let's remove this because they don't say how you want to, to show the table. So you can have it like this, where you have your observed and then your expected next to it. But the other thing that you need to remember is to go and calculate the total right here at the bottom, but only the total will apply for the observed values. So, 60 plus 40, it's 100. 22 plus 68 is 90. 90. And also, I forgot, we also need the total here at the end. Hmm. So there should be another total there. You need that. You need that total there. And the total here will be 60 plus 30, 22 plus 30, 112. One, one, okay. For some reason now it means I must re rethink of my table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do it again. Uh, you will need to have the total here. It's very important if you're going to calculate the observed frequencies. So this will be 112. Oh, I need also the grand total here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So this will be your total. I've already calculated that was 100. Uh, now I forgot 90. And 90 again. Mm -hmm. 8 and 2, 20. 168. And the grand eight. total is? Two eight. Two eight. It's two eighty. I just want to write it nicely. Two eighty. Okay, so you need that, but you also need the expected value. So you can extend this and create the expected value on the side. Nothing. They 
there is no right or wrong answer. So you can ex you can extend this and create expected value on that. Or it doesn't really matter. You can use the same table, but you need to clearly indicate that inside the values are observed and inside are your expected. If I'm going to rewrite them on here. Mm. So now we need to make this given clearly indicating your observed and expected. So let's do that. Expected for 60 will be so expected for 60 will be 112 times 100 divided by 280. And you can do for the rest of them. For expected for 22 will be 112 times 90 divided by 280. So you, you can do for all of them. So let's. So I'll, I'll give you some minutes while I go to the bathroom. Uh, see if you are able to calculate all of them and then I will come back with You need to practice for tomorrow's exam. I'm not. I'm not playing. Yeah, but when do you do it? When do you do it? No, I want you to do it now, right now. Not in class. I don't trust you. You know, I don't trust you. Okay, so have you tried to answer? Uh, just give me a sec. Three. Let me just write all those values here. Maybe question paper.
Okay, so just want to show you something as well while we busy with this. I'm going to stop sharing and then share my entire screen. Um, reason why I don't like using my entire screen is because people now then are able to see my WhatsApp because I've got so many applications open. OK, so I have this template that I use with my statistics sessions. Um, it makes it easier for them, um, especially now uh, it's a cheat sheet, something like talk, something like that. So I'm going to hide some of this for the purpose of our class today. Because what I did was to answer the question that we we have on here. So this template has all permutation of contingency tables. Oh, not all of them, but most permutation of contingency tables based on the previous uh, activities that the statistics uh, students would have done. So. So in terms of your one, I just used the two by three because I needed to identify what kind of a contingency table you have. And then I just have like, uh, substituted the values onto here. So going back to your question, uh, let's come back here. You can see that you have, so in terms of our one, we have our observed values. Uh, with the years and no and not sure and semester one and semester two and then we calculated the total. So it's similar, this template does the same. So what I did, uh, here are your observed values. So it means on your answer sheet you can write it like observed values and have your observed values and substitute all the observed values the way you like it, uh, the way they are asked and the totals so you can see they calculated the totals as well and my expected values and there you can see so i just need to remove that highlight probably it was for something else so there is our expected values remember we said what is our expected value in terms of our question OK, so we said expected value for 60 is 112 multiplied by 100. What did you get? Sorry, just to life, 40. 40. Oh, yes. 40. Multiply by 100 equals divide by 280. It's equals to 40. Yes. Yes. As you can see on the template as well, our expected value for that for 60 is equal to 40. And that is just the calculation that I did the same way. Your L, so if I click, double click on it, you will be able to see that. Let me make it bigger. Sorry. Let me make this screen bigger. So if I click on this, you will see that it takes the observe uh, value, uh, total of semester one multiply by um, observed value total for years and divide by the grand total of 208 mm. and that you vote so automatically the, the the template does the calculations for you all what you need to do is just feed it this information the only thing that you need to populate is just that information and then it does all the calculation. So there are your expected value, which is 40. So in terms of our question, that was 40. And in terms of 22, it is 112 multiplied by 90. What do you have? Thirty-six. 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 So therefore, it is thirty-six. Oh, sorry, not that one. And that is thirty-six. So that will be. So if you use this kind of a template, then you can say forty. Put all your observed values into the bracket and say thirty-six, and so forth and so forth. Or you can create another table. Um, 
or you can use the same table and substitute and create all the values in there. So I'm just going to use the bracket for this. Mm -hmm. So going back into my graphic. 40, 54, 54. So this will be 40, 54. No. 54. Am I not doing that? The 40, 60. 60. Oh, 60. 60, 54, 54, and 36. So yes. my bad. Okay, 40 is 60. 60, 54, 54, 36. It's at the top, yeah. And 36 again. So yes. there are your observed and your frequencies as well. And then the next question actually asks us. So I'm just I just need to remove all this. And that is why I don't like working in a PDF because erasing the values in the PDF is more difficult and challenging than erasing in a PowerPoint slides. Just give me a sec to do this. Uh, we should be done by half past because this is almost done. Or even within five minutes of your time. So we have our expected value in a frequency table, so you can create it this way, or you can also put the frequency table, the frequency values next door or next to this observed frequency, but also highlight because it says clearly indicate your observed and your frequency. Depending on how you draw the table, it doesn't really matter as long as you are able to clearly identify. So Instead of me creating this observed values here, I could have just extended this table and have a heading here. Like I said, this will be the observed. And next to it here will be my expected frequencies. And I will have here 40, 36, 36. Sorry, jumped off. 36 and 60, 54, 54. And like I said, there is no right or wrong answer in terms of how you create your contingency table and making sure that you are able to clearly explain the values. You can create one where it's just this table with the, the observed in the bracket, but you need to tell them that the, the sorry, the expected in the bracket, but we need to also clearly indicate that the expected are in the bracket so that they can know what they are looking at. OK, so it's only for three months. Depending on how you want to draw it, use any format you want. Uh, determine the degrees of freedom. Uh, degrees of freedom for a, a chi-square, it's the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. Yes. So remember when you calculate the number of rows, don't count the additional expected value columns if you created one, don't count the totals as well. Only the observed categories. Okay, so how many number of rows? These are rows and these are columns. Can I have? How many? How many rows do you have? Two. Oh. There are only two, so it's two minus one. How many columns do you have? Three. three. There are three columns minus one, and that will be two minus one is two times three minus one. Oh. Come on, come That's on, two. come on, come on. It's one times two, which is equals to two. So that is your degrees of freedom. Now we need to go find the critical value. So finding the critical value, it's chi squared. Critical value is alpha and the degrees of freedom. So your alpha is 0, 0,05 okay. and the degrees of freedom is 2. So we need to go to the chi squared test. So you need to go to the no. um, chi squared test. Also pay attention to 
the level of significance, which is your alpha and your degrees of freedom. So this is your degrees of freedom and these are your alpha values. So our degrees of freedom is two. Our alpha is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 and two where they both meet. And that is 5,9915. So that is 5,99. How many nines? Two nines. One five. And then the last portion, like last two questions. Do we reject the null hypothesis? Similar with the chi squared. The graph is there for the tree. Anything that falls here, we reject. Reject the null hypothesis. This should help yeah, with the decision. Decision rule. Decision. Okay. Hi. Come on. What's my English now? I think my brain is now tired. Really. Yeah. I can feel it. Decision. Decision rule. So that is the decision rule. We can use this as our base. So we we know that anything that falls in the small shaded area, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That is the decision. So our critical value is 5,9915. I'm going to do it on here so that we can have it here. So we know that this is the decision, the decision rule. This is just to help us make that decision. So the critical value is here. Our critical value, chi square crit of 5,9915, it is here. That is our critical value, this area of rejection. So looking at our test statistic, remember the test statistics, which is chi-squared, they gave us, they calculated it already. So we can use that with the critical value and make a decision. So anything that falls here, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So now, in terms of this, do we reject the null hypothesis? We do. So because our chi-squared test, so you always have to remember to do that. Chi square set of 27.38 uh, it's greater than, it will be greater than the critical value of 5,9915. Therefore, uh, therefore, we reject Checked. Then our hypothesis. That is the only statement you need to write for one mark. The last last statement is how do you interpret your findings? And with how much certainty that would be. That is the last part that you need. Remember, we always need to go back to the statement that was given to us. Mm -hmm which is very long in this instance. So in relation to this, so remember, because we didn't talk about the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis for chi-square test, all what you need to always remember, the null hypothesis should always state independent, and the alternative should always state dependent, which means Independent means there is no relationship, or this will say there is a relationship. Because this is the categorical differences between the two. But you can also state it in relation to the statement that was given. Is there a difference between first, second semester student regarding their level of significance relating to assessment method used in this module. 
during the lockdown period. So it would have meant that in your null hypothesis, you would have said there is no significant relationship. And in your alternative, you would have said there is a significant relationship between, because remember, this is a measure of relationships. So, how do you conclude? Anyone, any take for two months? <laughs> Anyone? Okay. If there is nobody because I think we are all our brains are all tired but the same thing that you have been doing the whole time when you answer this question you could have also said um, with uh, because it's five percent level of significance with 95 percent certainty there is a significant different um, there is no significant differences between because we rejected the null hypothesis what which said there is no relationship so here we would say there is a significant difference or there is a relationship between there is a relationship between the the, the first second student regarding their level of significance or you could have said there is a significant difference between there is a significant difference between first and second semester student regarding their levels of significance. And with that, it concludes our exam prep session number one, which will be our last session. I'm just going to put on my mic for now. And I'm going to ask you if there are any other questions. This is me for those who joined late and you don't know Elizabeth Boy. This is Elizabeth Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So are there any other questions? Any anything that I can help with uh, before we call it a quits? I'm going to stop the recording now so that we can have a free and open discussion. I'm going to stop it. Sorry, let me.